Hello and welcome to this week's Bolsover TV. My name is Michael. Here's what's coming up on the programme. A memorial has been unveiled to commemorate the South Normanton colliery disaster where eight men lost their lives. An author and poet from Whitwell is set to publish his first novel after being inspired by his garden. If you're finding it hard to teach your child how to ride a bike, then sign up to the council's next balance ability course. And three local scouts are busy fundraising money to go on a trip of a lifetime. But first, as our local businesses emerge from an incredibly tough 24 months of trading, Bolsover District Council is stepping in with a lifeline to help them. They've teamed up with the Federation of Small Businesses to launch a new scheme, essentially giving small firms and self-employed businesses a package of free support for a whole year. Included will be advice and guidance on areas like legal and tax issues, employment legislation, free business banking, cyber protection and insurance. The service is available to businesses with 50 or fewer employees that have not been members of the Federation of Small Businesses in the previous 12 months. Councillor Liz Smith told us how important it is to help local businesses and why the council is choosing to do so. We want to support our small, medium um, enterprises. All of those businesses are so important to us. Those businesses provide employment, they provide training, they provide apprenticeships, and we want them to do well. Uh, we've been launching this at this time because we realise that it's been really difficult these past two years and this last sort of wave of Omicron has been particularly difficult because there's not been an awful lot of government financial support. So what we're doing is offering this now so that our businesses can come back, they can survive and thrive for the future. Now, at around 9pm on the 15th of February 1937, South Normanton Colliery was the scene of a major disaster. A large explosion caused chaos, which resulted in a massive rescue effort to try and find those who were trapped in the rubble. Unfortunately, eight men were killed and three injured, marking the worst disaster in the colliery's history. And for the past month, East Midlands Designer Outlet, which now occupies the site of the former colliery, has had a window display depicting information and imagery from the article written by Roger West in Derbyshire Life about that fateful day. Messages of condolence were received from far and wide, including the Duke of Devonshire and the French Under Secretary of State for Mines. And we went along to the commemorative event to mock the disaster. It's absolutely poignant that 85 years ago, on the site of this shopping centre, that such an important thing happened to the local community. And uh, myself and Andrew felt, when we spoke last summer, that this is something that we absolutely need to recognise, not just as MacArthur Glen, but actually as a local community. It's, it's been ongoing for, for a few weeks and months. How nice is it to bring it together, and on a day that obviously marks the 85th anniversary as well? Yeah, th this day is absolutely fabulous. Um, the uh, Local History of Society approached me, which is uh, Graham Hunt and uh, uh, Roger West. Uh, they approached me and asked me and told me about the, uh, the 85th anniversary. And I've got connections here with David. Me and David get on really well. David does a lot for the South Normandy community. Um, and I came and I asked him and he said yes instantly. So hey, we, and this has brought us to where we are today. I have to ask you about the, the plaque itself. What are your thoughts and, and what are your thoughts now? It's up and running, if you like. My thoughts are, if we hadn't have done this between us, it would have been lost to history. Sooner or later, it would have been lost. Now, it's, we've got a plaque up that uh, commemorates it for everybody to see and it, it, uh, it respects the memories of the people who passed away. The word I would use is it's, it's great to be able to enrich the centre and the local community with putting integrations out into the scheme which people can see when they come and visit um, that's really important and also for those that are part of the local council part of the local community that can come and come and see it again and again and the families have already reached out to us and, and said how, how pleased they are that that's available for them to see a new initiative called you versus train is running in whitwell shirebrook creswell and Warley thorns to help educate young people on the dangers of playing near railway lines 
In partnership with East Midlands Rail Community Rail Partnership, the council is putting on multi-sports sessions alongside providing rail safety information to help raise awareness of the train line and reduce antisocial behaviour at the stations. Limited places are still available on the council's next balance ability course starting in March. The course is aimed at helping to teach children aged three to six years old how to ride a bike using fun games by building their confidence, spatial awareness and balance skills. Level one and level two programmes will start on Sunday the 6th of March and will last for six weeks. Now, over the past two years, most people will have spent more time outdoors listening to the bird song and enjoying the peace and tranquility of their gardens. But author and poet Richard C. Bauer from Whitwell used this time creatively to write his first novel that he describes as a personal and philosophical journey. Called An Expedition Around My Garden, the book is about exploring the magic of nature and has been pre-ordered by the National Library of India due to being deemed similar to the book Gitanjali by Rabindranath Tagore, which won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Richard told us a bit more about the book and what people can expect from it. It's different in terms of my other books that have been published, they're poetry books. Uh, this um, is a novel. The book is called An Expedition Around, Around My Garden. It's kind of a, it's a literal, personal and philosophical journey. It kind of explores the magical aspects of nature and the deeper you go into it, the philosophical, the deep level, also, it, it kind of mirrors the journey that you go inside as well. So, it, like I say, it's like a pilgrimage of the soul. It's a, it's a, it's a voyage of discovery. It's also, during the pandemic, we were, again, limited as to what we could do, and people were getting bored. And that's partly where the idea came from. It was about just appreciating, uh, being aware of what's around you. I think it's quite fitting that something that was born on back in garden in Whitwall is kind of making waves around the world in China and India, and it's not even been published yet. What would you say to anyone who's, who's thinking of buying it, might be interested in buying it? What would your message to them be? It's more important that people read it, not buy it, read it. And finally, a trip to South Korea might feature on many people's wish list. It definitely features on mine. But for three young people in the district, the dream is about to become a reality. Three scouts representing 1st Whitwell and 4th Bolsover Scout Groups have been selected to attend the 25th Annual World Scout Jamboree, which is taking place in South Korea in 2023. This once-in-a-lifetime opportunity affords the scouts the chance to meet other scouts from around the globe and learn about other cultures and sample Korean food as well. Unbelievable. However, they must pay their own way and each scout must raise three and a half thousand pounds to pay for the trip. But luckily for them, Council Chair, Councillor Tom Munro, decided to donate 200 pounds to each of them to get them started. We're going to South Korea, the 25th World Scout Jamboree in 2023, and we've got to raise 3,500 pounds each. And it's just 4,000 scouts, 10,000 leaders all like together in one unit, like community of scouts, doing fun activities, learning and developing more of a personality and a character. Um, Amy, you snuck in through the back door though. Tell us about your experience because it's been a bit of a roller coaster, hasn't it? Well, I knew Freya was going and obviously I was devastated but extremely happy for her and I knew I'd help her with the fundraising. And then Freya messaged me one night and said, I've got a surprise for you, you're going as well. I was over the moon and I was so happy. Freya came round to mine. My, both of our mums were crying our eyeballs out, so proud of us. But it's just more money to raise and we know we can do it because we've got loads of stuff planned for the future. Um, I'm really excited because um, I get to go on this trip um, that not many people do get to go on. It is quite a tough thing to go through, such as doing an application and going to a selection day where you meet lots of new people, which can be scary. But um, it'll be nice to learn a new language, meet new people and try and learn the culture a bit more. The most favourite thing that I am looking forward to do is um, try new food from different countries. 
I'd love to learn like what they do and what major events they do as a country because that'll be something major different to what we do. I'm looking forward to all activities because I've seen there's like paragliding, uh, zip lining, rock climbing and I'm such an adventurous person I just enjoy that so much. I think the best bit about that was Nathan had no idea that that was possible so I think you just <laughs> made his trip. Well good luck to all three of the scouts and we'll definitely be tracking their progress. That's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I look forward to seeing you next week on Bolsover TV where we'll be visiting a group in Clown who are providing a helping hand to the local community. But for now, goodbye. <laughs>